All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Last time we left off with the Red Army Strikes from the East. And we're now on to... Out of the Deep to Storm a Continent. Uh, June 1944. Oh, if it wants to, there we go. It's their turn now. American reinforcements eager... Uh, hold on. There we go. Eager at their shot at... The retreating Nazis in Normandy pile from a Coast Guard landing barge into the surf on the French coast. Hardened for battle, they are on their way to reinforce and replace fighting units that secured the Norman beach. The beachhead. And, at the moment, were engaged in the great battle to liberate Cherbourg. So there's a top picture right here that you guys can see. Men. Obviously posed up for the camera. That's kind of what's going on here. Um, and then if you look at the southern side, you can see more. Um, a lot of these pictures were taken afterwards as like a, this is what happened, not exactly when it was happening. But that's fine because it just gives us an idea, you know. At least it exists for what we can get gather. First aid for the wounded. June 23rd, 1944. A casualty in a Norman town. In Treves, France, United States Army and Naval, Ma Navy medical corps men combined to give an injured American soldier the necessary, necessary treatment as he fell from a sniper's bullet during the fight to liberate this town. Fast work by the medics and the prompt use of blood plasma not only saved the lives of many soldiers, but also returned them to the front line. Yeah, so blood plasma, obviously very important. A lot of soldiers need it for, so they can be good. People just need, you need blood plasma. It's just what we, what makes us kind of work for, uh, at all, really. Um, so, yeah. And they had a, lots of reserves. I believe in a, in a, not I don't believe, in a previous episode, we actually went over it. And I showed um, the big casks that they had full of it. So, very neat stuff. Sorry, there we go. There was something on the camera I was trying to clean off. First Americans enter Cherbourg. June 25th, 1944. Lafayette, we are here. Soldiers of the United States Army move into Cherbourg to wipe out the pockets of Nazi resistance after tremendous land and naval barrages had softened them up. Uh, the enemy defenses of this strategic channel port, uh, the principal objective in the first phase of the fighting on the French soil. Yeah, so they need, uh, like I said in the last episode, they need a lot of... Uh, they need a good landing point. So they had created like these uh, concrete uh, ports, more or less, um, so that they uh, they could just load uh, load off stuff. But um, they they're not perfect, so they work on getting actual ports that were already there, so Cherbourg or other ports nearby. Things like that. But this is a first step that you need to get so that you can get troops on there, get supplies on there better, things like that. And so they're going to work very hard to get this to be done. The generals want to die in bed. June 26th, 1944. Surrender at Cherbourg. Lieutenant General von Schleiben right? Emerges, uh, emerges from his hideout to surrender to the Americans. And below, with Admiral Walter Hennick, cool. left, discusses, I believe this picture here, actually. So I believe this guy is the Walter Heckel. Um, where is it? Oh, yeah. Um, discusses the terms of surrender with the shirt-sleeved Major General J. Lawton Collins, right. The somewhat haggard von Schleiben was willing enough to hoist the white flag himself, but he flatly refused to surrender, 
the garrison. When he was asked how he could justify leaving his men to die uselessly after he had saved his own skin, he shrugged his shoulders and explained that it had been his experience in Russia that small groups of diehards could achieve major delays, leaving the small fry to die gloriously for Adolf Hitler. In order to repair the mistakes of the higher command, became something of a specialty of German tactics. So, yeah, what they're obviously saying here is, like, they are... He's trying to delay them as long as possible so that they are able to then better delay the Allies so that maybe the soldiers can fight back and then have a better chance of actually clearing away the Allies' advance. Potentially. And now, is that going to actually work? No, probably not. But it's an idea, at least. The sheep people of Cherbourg greet their liberators. June 27th, 1944. The Yanks enter the city. In the picture at the right, American soldiers on the 9th Division and French patriots ride a German tank through the streets of the great pre-war port after its liberation. Below... American troops uh, in battle formation pass through ruins of the Norman city on the lookout for snipers who delayed their entry into the heart of the city for several hours. Cherbourg was ringed with curling gray and black smoke as the troops entered the French civilian entered and French civilians who had survived the shelling of the city came out uh from the, of their shelters, and somehow found flowers to throw at the Americans. Many of them had faces blackened by soot and the fu from fire, which raged in the city. Yeah, so uh, the French people, basically everywhere, they suffer pretty awfully. Um, it's kind of unfortunate that, when you really think about it, the people that are suffering the most... In most of this war are the civilians um, on both sides. Think, uh, you know, uh, the Soviet Union, y you have uh, Berlin, which is getting constantly bombarded by ally uh, bombing planes. And so you just have these civilian and, you know, obviously London, obviously uh, you have all these people that are just civilians. They're not participating particularly in the war. But it just doesn't really matter. And it's kind of unfortunate that the really the people that suffer are sometimes children, things like that. People that didn't didn't do anything. Didn't deserve this, at least. Cherbourg falls to the Americans. June 27th, 1944. Scenes inside the shell-torn city. Citizens of the French port Returning to Allied-controlled Cherbourg, gaze at one of the soldiers of Hitler's once-proud Wehrmacht, now lying um, asleep. We're gonna put on that in a street of the city. Below, German prisoners, um, their hands held high above their heads, follow the lead of their commanders and surrender to the American forces. Okay, so obviously we have the guy up there who's just sleeping on the road, YouTube. That's all he's doing, I promise. Um, many such scenes, obviously. And a lot of the time it's really unfortunate because some of these are just boys. Especially at this point, the the Nazis are just scraping the bottom of the barrel, you know. They don't have the amount of people that they once did, and so it's just, it's just boys. And it's just sad. And yeah, I you a lot of times would just wish that these people would just surrender because you get to a point where it's just like, like I said, you're just it's just boys and old men and uh, it's just awful. It's just awful. Cherbourg returns to the French, June twenty seventh, nineteen forty four. The flags fly over the city hall again. United States forces formally occupied Cherbourg on Tuesday, June 27th, and forthwith presented it to the French people as the first large city to be returned to them. In the place in the Place Napoleon, on the steps of the Hotel de Ville, 
shown above. That's what we are, Hotel de Ville. Just six hours after the last Germans had been driven out, Major General Collins gave the city a tricolor made from red, white, and blue parachutes, in which the vanguard of the invasion attacked from the skies on June 6th. In return, he received French thanks for the liberation of the Great Normandy Port, which was the first deep water port taken by the Allies in France. Yeah, so obviously the French people, they're going to appreciate that. Um, having their flag back over their city, you know, it's it's a first step. And they're, I'm sure, more than happy for that first step. But with that, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I could improve on. I always appreciate your feedback. And as always, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Thank you.